Hey, this is Pastor Samuel Wilson with a word for your Wednesday. Today you might notice we have a different lens that we're using. Uh, This lens that we're using today, it's uh, focused in, but it also sees the background. Normally in the videos, the background's blurred out. That way you can focus on me. Then you can see what's going on. But no, not today. Today, uh, I asked Whitney, who does these filmings, to make sure that we could see the background. These walls are primed. They're ready for paint. There's something new happening, but they're unfinished. Uh, They're primed for something. And today we're going to turn to Isaiah chapter 9, where the people of Israel are primed for something. They're primed for a promise from God. They're living in difficult, dark days with a wicked, evil king. And they need a promise. They need something that they can hold on to. And so in Isaiah chapter 9, we read about the promise of the Messiah, the Savior who was to come. It would be many, many, many years before that Messiah would come, yet there was a promise here given. And this month we celebrate the birth of that Savior, Jesus Christ, but that was foretold all the way back to Isaiah 9. So let's study it together. Isaiah 9.2 reads, The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. The people who live in a dark land, the light will shine on them. So it starts out by talking about this Messiah, this Savior who's to come, telling us that the people in a dark land, the people will see a light. There will be a light that will dawn upon them. Interestingly, in Matthew chapter 4, when Jesus begins his ministry, uh, it is noted in that book that what Jesus was doing in that day was to fulfill what was saying in Isaiah 9, that a light would dawn upon people in a dark land. That light, it would shine upon them, Jesus, the light of the world. Verse 3, you shall multiply the nation, you shall increase their joy, and there will be rejoicing in your presence. So it's talking about this Messiah who's going to come. There would be an increase. There would be an increase of joy. There would be an increase of gladness because of this Messiah who would come. It says, as with the gladness of harvest, like something that's received, something that's paid off. When this Messiah comes, it will be like the harvest. We reap joy. We reap rejoicing says, as men, when they divide the spoil, meaning they get portions of the goods, like there's this good coming, we get a portion of Jesus Christ. Next in verse four, you shall break the yoke of their burden, the staff on their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor oppressor, as the battle of Midian. Every boot of the booted warrior, the cloak rolled in blood will be burning fuel for fire. Basically it's saying like, we don't have to be fitted for battle anymore once the Messiah comes because he's going to win the victory. And we have the victory in Jesus Christ. So this is the Messiah. It's going to come. You don't have to war anymore. Uh, the burden that's on your back, Jesus would come and say, my burden's easy. Uh, my yoke is easy. My burden's light. And then in verse 6, it says, for a child will be born to us. A son will be given. A child. Jesus would be born. He would be an infant. A child would come. A son would be given to us. Given to us. That's Jesus. It says the government will rest on his shoulders. So the government will rest on his shoulders. We know that one day Jesus will rule and reign from Jerusalem. Uh, we look forward to that day fully. And then his name will be called Wonderful Counselor. So he's not just a counselor who's with us, who we can hear from and glean from. He's a wonderful counselor. Mighty God, he is our God, the God incarnate, Jesus Christ eternal father. He's from the the days of old. He's from the beginning, Jesus Christ, the prince of peace. And Jesus says that I don't give peace as the world gives peace. No, he gives us true peace, peace with God. That's who Jesus is, the prince of peace. And so you might be primed for a promise like that in your life today. Or maybe you're primed to be reminded of the promise of the Savior today. Well, Uh, To those in Isaiah 9, he had yet come, but we know today he's already come. And so we can cling to that. We can trust in him. We can seek our wonderful counselor, our mighty God, eternal father, our prince of peace. I encourage you today to look to Jesus because he is the one 
who was and is and is to come. God bless you. Have a great week.